What am I looking? <laughs> I'm sitting here looking like, hey, ain't no camera in front of me. What's going on? <laughs> nah, I'm good. I am chilling, my son. Just ready for the dark side. We're we're live. Yeah. Oh, live. I know we was live. Yeah. I didn't see the screen change. Good morning, good afternoon, and good <laughs> evening, and welcome to the Just Keep Swimming Podcast. This is your boy, your friend, your host, Mr. Adrian Jackson, and we're live again with another great episode for you, and you already know who's with me. It's the man, the myth, the legend. It's Mr. One, three. A.K.A. Un Trois. A.K.A. Captain Capper. A.K.A. Donovan Jackson. A.K.A. Um, darkness. Oh, um, I, I was yeah. waiting for I was like, darkness. I hope you say it. It's old school when he used darkness and like... The, yeah, that's the old gamer tag. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Old Pokemon games too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us again for another great episode. And you already know we have some more fire in the bank for you guys. So we're going ahead and just drop, dive right into it. And we have some very special guests with us today, uh, coming all the way from Milwaukee, now in Vegas. We have the Hendrick Bros. We have, we have, oh, we have. Marvin and Tim? Yeah, Marvin and Tim. Yeah, Melvin, Melvin and, and Tim. Tim. Sorry, Melvin. I want to make sure I got it right. Melvin and Tim. Melvin and Tim. How are we doing, fellas, today? Real good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you all for joining us today. I appreciate you all so much. And, um, yeah, thank you for taking the time. And sorry for holding you up a little bit on that. But, yeah, thank you so much, fellas. Yeah, so uh, we're going to just dive right into it. And I just, just want to learn, like, who are you guys? Like, when people walk up and say, who are the Hendrick bros? Like, what is your answer for that? Um, you can go first. <laughs> um, I would say creative individuals, um, positive, um, all about, you know, making other people feel important and just try to just stay positive and mm. keep good good energy, good vibes. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And what about you, Tim? Um, artists, um, innovators, creators, um, entrepreneurs. So a little bit of a lot in the blender, mm. a little bit of that. I like it. So what kind of art do you guys do? I know you guys do paintings, of course, but like, do you guys do more than that? Yeah. Yeah, we get into the uh, custom, so it could be like groups of pictures that we put together and uh, animals, landscapes. So any media, we're pretty, pretty much open mm. when it comes to art. That's dope. And then what type of like... Your art is really unique. I wish we would have brought some to today so you, the, uh, the crowd can see them. But if you guys haven't checked out their art yet, go check out Hendrick Bros at IG and you can see so much of their art uh, listed. Hendrix, H-E-N-D-R-I-X Bros on IG. You can see all their art. And a lot of your art I've been noticing, it looks like you're catching the aura of a person. Like, can y'all explain, like, what that is? Like, what am, what am I actually looking at? It's so crazy. So dope, um, We try to keep it spiritual. Like, um, we try to capture the essence of everybody that we do. And the frequency yeah. of the person. You know, just by looking at them, you can pick up a certain vibration. Yeah. And then we just try to select the color that's closer, closest to the person as we kind of perceive them. Mm. Have you always been able to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I was pretty much um, able to see auras when I was a little kid, yeah. That's interesting. So, like, you actually, like, so can you see my aura right now? Kinda I see sort of. yours. It's like a light a light blue. Mm, D. I always thought it would be red. What about <laughs> him? I see more of a purple, of a light purple aura. So what are those, like, two colors, like, mean to you then? Um... Like blend it together, or those two colors? Well, or let's, just let's go individually, yeah. yeah. Individually, yeah. Um, I would see for him the reason why I seen that light. I see a lot of uh, the throat chakra. Mm. He's real good at communication, mm. and I see with him more of the the mind. He likes to go deep. Yeah, I'm pretty accurate too. D. I mean, so so it's funny you say that. So I do. <laughs> I hear the producer there laughing. Uh, so I do uh, podcasting. Okay. I host trivia, and I also coach flag football. And I've done so many presentations in my life that I can't count them. So yeah, that's what's up. That, that's pretty interesting how you said that. And I always feel I'm a terrible communicator, but. I mean, if you see it, then I'm going to run with it. <laughs> I mean, you can just start conversations, though. Like, I mean, after we got settled today, like, you just went in and started having a conversation. Like, I kind of did when we 
both pulled up, <laughs> but like you're just much more of a natural at it. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, I mean, I appreciate that. Yeah. I try. You know, years and years of practice of being shy. I. Uh, it's funny you said that because the other day I was telling the story how I. Um, I went to the barb shop the first time to go see uh, Trey. Shout out Trey Barber, uh, House of Phage. Um, and I sat there for three hours because I was scared to walk up to him to say, hey, I'm Adrian, I'm here for this two o'clock appointment. So I sat there for three hours and didn't get my hair cut because I was scared to talk. <laughs> this was when I was young, bro. I was like 11 or so. And I, was, I sat there and I got in trouble and everything. And the moms had to come in and embarrass me. So oh. yes, I had to learn communication. Man. I love it. But uh, enough about me though. Yeah, it's not about me today. So, so um, do you also see things as well, uh, Melvin? No? No, I'm not as into that as much. I do. But he's always been that yeah. way. Yeah. I was going to ask a quick question. Can you see your own aura? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if you look in the mirror, I guess? Yeah, it's like a light yellow. Most of the time? Or does it ever change? Or? Um, depends on the moods. Yeah. Mm. You know. Okay, so because I'm in podcaster mode, I'm getting off of blue aura right now. But if I'm part of a uh, coach mode or something like that, it's probably be red. More, yeah, more red for groundiness and yep. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. I yes. love it. Do you know about chakras at all? Uh, yes, I do actually. I actually been digging into chakras a lot lately. Um, you know, really trying to. We actually had a class the other day. Uh, shout out to Adam from Adam. We did a whole uh, human design class. Have wow. you guys heard about human design? First time hearing about that one. No. Really? So uh, human design is an amazing study where they talk about how um, pretty much based off astrology, uh, birthday, star chart, all these different type of charts that I do not know the correct names for them, um, they can really break down your design, what it is to be your human being. He counts it, he looks at it as your human manual, kind of like your car manual. It's your human manual, who you are. So you understand why when I get angry, I get mad at others because uh, my anger is bitterness. And that's what really gets to me. Not, you know, I don't get mad at myself, but when somebody else makes me late, now it's this person's fault. Now I'm all about to burn down the building because of this person, you know? So um, it's really amazing though. So I would check that out, both of you guys. And it's actually free to everybody out there listening. Go check out your human design. If you don't know your human design yet, you're slacking in life right now. So please go get your human design. You know, you're Aries, you know, you know, all this other stuff, human design is all that blended together. So yeah, I would check it out for sure. But um, but back to chakras though. Yes, I have been working on my chakras, um, trying to get my root chakra back grounded and everything. Get some crystals in my life to try to get my chakras, you know, ch more charged up and get the things that I need to do. So yeah, what about you guys? You guys are big into chakras and everything? Um, for me, I found it very interesting how they were able to break down the different levels on the body like the solar plex the uh, crown chakra mm -hmm. and then like I said the grounding that's a real important one on the earth right now right that way you don't get too charged up in the ego and then you get out of control exactly which so a lot balance. of people have like problems with i guess now yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. especially now because everything's very uh accelerated right now with emotions mm -hmm. you know yeah. it seems like yes no i agree with that they accelerated i feel like a lot of people can learn to slow down again you know, yeah. like when's the last time you went to a park and took a walk without looking at your phone, wondering what time it was. Yeah, that's true. You know, like we have to get back to that. So I was gonna say, honestly, when you take that brief pause, uh, like recently, I, um, I just had to go get my car serviced yesterday mm -hmm. uh, in the morning, and <laughs> shout outs to Dad. He <laughs> he, <laughs> he left his phone at home. And then he didn't see me come out, so he went back home to get his phone, and then I was just like, well, I gotta wait for him to come back. Mm -hmm. But instead of just being on my phone while sitting on the bench, I was just chilling, looking at the scenery. People watching. And people watching. Yeah. And, I mean, there was, like, three different people that came up and was like, oh, how you doing? Oh, have a good day. I hope you have a blessed one. But just being able to have that open aura to accept communication and kind of connect with people, uh, you know, as they come by through life. Just mm -hmm. taking appreciation for life, which is nice. Right, exactly. So you guys, so I'm guessing you guys are big into the spiritual realm, I'm guessing. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Yes, cool. What about you, Melvin? Like, what are your big spiritual things that you really like? Um, I'm just a spiritual person. Uh, we was raised in a Christian church, um, mm -hmm. apostolic, so my dad is a, still a pastor. So. Oh, word. Yeah, we always had a spiritual background. Mm -hmm. 
That's really dope, man. So and I love so it's low key like you taking your spiritual background and throwing it into your painting. Into the art. Yeah. Right. As I got older, um, after our mom passed, we kinda that's when we started to come together mm -hmm. um, and do it together. Oh, that's dope. You yeah. guys were united. So you guys are actually blood brothers. But mother, same mother and father. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's super dope. Is it uh how does it feel working with your brother? Uh, um, for me it's it's a dream because you're you can relate on every level, so it's not like you're looking at him side eye, wondering if he's trying to undermine you or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a good uh, good unity within the team and we're growing together with the entrepreneur spirit and uh, you know, it's really working out. That's dope. So like who's the first one to, uh, to I guess take that step into art and then bring the other one with them or was it more of? I would say him. He, yeah, it was kind of a combination because we would go out to eat and then we would discuss it, mm -hmm. you know, way back in the day. And it was like, to see it turn into what it turned into, it just shows that we kind of manifested it by having the idea, you know, mm -hmm. early on. But the mom, our mom pretty much put it in us to, to do it, you know. She kept mentioning it over and over. Kind of like a catalyst, I guess, yeah. for everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. No, and that's beautiful. I feel like our mom, my mom did that same thing too. You know, she always wanted to make sure the family stuck together. So it was kind of dope because when I came up with the idea for the podcast, my my brother was the first two people I reached out to, you know, Dom and Triv. I reached out to them first and I was like, hey, I want to have this idea. You guys know all this music stuff. How do I make it happen? And it's crazy because I was thinking like the same thing about like a year prior because mm -hmm. I always wanted to like do a podcast and then, well, it was like a dream idea to do a podcast and then, you know, have guests come onto the show. We'll talk about, you know, philosophy, spirituality, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, I'll cook up a beat like out of nowhere and then somebody just freestyles on it. That's the end like of the show. <laughs> yes, sir. And I was like, uh. <laughs> but he hit me up with the idea of just the podcast and I was like, I'm down. Like, why not? <laughs> yeah, we want to do one eventually at some point. Definitely. Yeah, yeah no, what kind of topics you want to talk about? Uh, uh, everything. Oh, we're pretty open, flexible. Yeah. yeah. And I just, like, stop myself if there's something I'm uncomfortable with, I'll be honest. You know, <laughs> if some stuff will stir people up. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that you one. You know? Yeah, it can't get too deep sometimes. Nah. Yeah, people ain't ready for that. <laughs> not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So uh, let's get into more of your background a little bit. Um, I remember we were talking during the pregame, and you guys were talking about you were from Milwaukee, and you guys moved to Vegas. Right. Like, that is a big jump. Like, what made you take that jump? Um, we felt like it was more opportunity here compared to Milwaukee. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. They don't really have, like, the artist world out there, I'm guessing, like the music um, world? They have a few people, like Rico Love is from Milwaukee, uh, Jacob Lattimore. Cuckoo um, Cow. Yeah, mm -hmm. Cuckoo Cow. Mm -hmm. So they have people, it's just not, I feel like it's not as much opportunity. Right. Do you think those people uh, also left the city first to get the yeah. notoriety <laughs> and then kind of came back? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Definitely was branching out and traveling and, you know, getting their name out there too and then coming back home. Mm -hmm. Right, and they're showing everybody where you're actually from now. Exactly. Okay, I can understand that. So is that like your same type of plan, I'm guessing, from uh, coming out here to Vegas for your music? or? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we did a lot since we've been here, so I feel like it was a good move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. dope. What have you guys done? Like, I'm just curious. I just want to know your resume. Um, like, I'm really just want to learn about you. Um, um, what's the number of the art shows now? Kind of uh, six, over 60 art shows. Definitely, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. Like, um, you guys put them on yourself? Or yeah, you guys actually we, attend them and everything? We did a lot of uh, first party shows over on uh, Maine and Charleston. Mm. And um, we did uh, West Las Vegas Art Center. Mm. And uh, we did that twice, so. Okay. Yeah, we did a lot. That's really dope. Yeah. So you guys still be out there on first Friday and everything? You'll be uh, back we, soon. We plan to do it in May, so we're mm -hmm. working on that right now. Okay, so yeah, everybody listen. Make sure you guys check them out first Friday in May. Don't, uh, don't get their art. If you guys haven't looked up their art yet, I had to search them up because some of their art is too unique. Oh, I did not just do that. <laughs> Freaking iPhones. There we go. Yeah, no, please. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's super if, dope. If, like, I wish trip, I could. Can you put some up? Yeah, Triv. There we there go. go. Thank you, Tease. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so that's the Hendrick Bros art right there. And I'm just loving it. That Nicki Minaj, you got the Tupac. Is that a, uh, is that Red Man? That ain't Red Man. Uh, that's a guy named uh, Hassan Fatal. He was a part of Tupac um, Entourage. Um, Tupac best friend. He passed away, I think, in 2015. Yep. Mm, dope. So, like, what inspired you guys, like, to draw these? Is really just, like, um, you have a whole bunch of artists you just want to do, or? 
Well, we kind of look at their documentaries and we learn about them and then we're inspired enough, we'll just do a painting. And that kind of gives people opportunity to kind of research them and, you know, see what their life was about. Mm. And that's where like the aura thing kind of comes in. Definitely. So another question, I guess, about the auras, can you get an aura based off of just the information themselves without that necessarily? That helps. Yeah. I definitely sometimes do a little research. Yeah. Just mm. to kind of get an idea of the horoscope and kind of the mentality they got, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. I understand. So it does take a lot to get an aura. So like how long do you have to like know somebody or research somebody to really feel you can paint their aura? Um, sometimes it's quick and sometimes it takes it takes a day, you know, just to, yeah. just to reflect, reflect, on reflect on it. Right. Yeah. Mm. Look at a couple of their videos and interviews, mm -hmm. you know. So do you guys, do you guys paint separately together like you guys actually like can join in and jump on each other paintings or how does that work i'll do some work on it then i'll pass it on to him oh word. vice versa and we kind of just do what we feel oh we did, word. we did a live show before we did it at the same time collaboration yeah, yeah. oh no oh, sick that is really sick <laughs> so y'all really have to be like in you like in sync on the same term and everything definitely yeah. Yeah. that is really dope so what do you guys do to get like in sync do you think it's just yeah. like really just natural between you guys maybe genetics probably just us having the same <laughs> mom and dad yeah yeah because we just n normally just randomly we'll just do a painting you know mm -hmm. sometime two at the same time three at the same time mm -hmm. get in that little zone mm. so what do you do when you guys feel like you're out of sync like uh, sometimes me and him you know we're coming with an episode idea and i'll call him like what you want to talk about and we'll be like I'll call you back in three days yeah. <laughs> and we'll give ourselves really three days to figure it out and then come back and then touch bases again. So I'm like, what do you guys do to get back on, on the same page? Write like three songs, you know, a couple songs, get into the music world a little bit mm -hmm. and then we'll kind of get an idea of the next uh, painting. Mm. Interesting. So but it comes quick too though. Yeah. Oh, it does come quick. Yeah. So it's like once you tap into it, you just there now. Mm -hmm. That's oh, That's really dope. Mm. You can ask questions. Um, I forgot. Yeah, it, it trailed <laughs> off, but I think it got answered either way, so you're good. <laughs> That's really dope. So, um, so how long have you guys actually been doing uh, the music, or how long have you guys been doing the music and the painting for? Like, did it start in Vegas, or did it start in Milwaukee? And you just brought it out here. Um, we talked about it for a while in Milwaukee it, before exactly. it actually happened out here. So. Right. Because I was doing like lower scales, like stuff, color pencils and paintings here and there, but here. The paintings are dominant right now. The mm. acrylic paintings. So, so then, what was your what was your catalyst? Like, what was the thing that really made you just say, you know what? We've been talking about this forever. Let's just do it. Like, what was the catalyst that really made you say that? Um, I would say our mom passing away. Like, right. That, that mm. really sparked something in us to like, cause she always talked about it. So we we figured this could be our way of paying homage to her and kind of showing our appreciation. Right. And no, kind of having a family business to kind of pass on to the next generation right. to have a legacy that right. we can build early, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. No, I respect that. I respect that for sure. Do you have um, any more of your family that's like any arts or anything? Um, let me see if I can name. I think some of them are able to do it, but not on the level that that we do. I have an uncle that uh, was real good at it. Mm. So uh, <laughs> I think I worded the question wrong. I was trying to get out what you said in the pregame. But I know you guys said you guys are actually related to a famous artist or a musician, actually. Yeah, our dad says we related to uh, Jimi Hendrix. Mm. And then you think that just runs in your blood now? Yeah, I think so. That's super dope, man. Have you guys actually been like to like his house or anything? Or um, His brother reached out like maybe five years ago and we did a painting for him. And that was like the closest to Jimi. Right. Mm. Yeah. That's really dope. That's super dope. Did y'all always hear good things about your relative or no? Uh, Jimmy, <coughs> Jimmy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I watched a lot of his documentaries, and I watched the movie Andre 3000 did, so that helped me like understand him a lot more. Right. Mm -hmm. And you said like I remember during the pregame too, you were talking about like spreading like his ideology and message too. What was, what is that for you? If you could put that into words, um, I would say spirituality. Uh, he was real big on colors and just expressing yourself and um, world peace. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. Um, seemed like he wasn't really deep into race. He was open to whoever was able to come to his energy level, right? And uh, vibrations. So, and he was a little bit quiet and laid back. I'm kind of like that, but then I have two sides as a Gemini, <laughs> you know. So, I encompass a lot of his uh, energy as I research. 
mm. a lot about him. Like the very similarities, especially with my brother, mm. with him too, as far as the characteristics and you know things that he say. That's dope. Mm. So it's like you like you really feel like I'm I'm more related than I thought I was. To him. Exactly. You Once you start I mean? researching, you start seeing the things that seem like it's in sync with his, as far as the uh, the way people look at us too. You know. Yeah. As far as how he started off. That's dope. That's really dope. So, um, so one song that I've been listening to that you guys have right now is called Drainage, I believe it's called. You know, don't y'all take my in. Boy, that song right there is stuck in my head, bro. So Appreciate I'm just curious of like, where did you get the inspiration from that? Like, where did that come from? Um, Definitely think that you're on the strip recording too. It's like, oh wow. Yeah, I would say <laughs> it, it was from experiences, like different people we interacted with that we felt like they were kind of more so draining us than giving us energy. So we wanted to kind of do something to kind of, um, you know, show that. Mm. And then for me, it's like, uh, just for instance, you don't want to go somewhere and they're taking all your money. So it's like you're draining <laughs> your, your energy as far as the money level, right. or you can look at it as, you just want to be able to go somewhere and relax. You don't want to come back home and feel like you've been drained. You got to right, charge, yeah. your, charge your battery back up. Right, you know, yeah, no, it's a lot I, of experiences, and it was a uh, uh, Trevion, too. Uh, definitely, T yeah. Smack, he uh made the beat for it. So when he sent it, it's just that's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> that's sick, yeah. that's dope. That's really go. Cool. Shout out T for making that amazing beat, man. That, that was beautiful, bro. I love it. It's been stuck in my head forever. Like, it was funny because me and PJ at the house working the other day, he started singing it. I was like, bro, I just got it out of my head. You just brought it back into my head. Like, come on, man. That's what's up. Appreciate so, it. Yeah, no, I love it, man. I love it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so then um i know we always you know like to talk about the good stuff when it comes to being an artist and everything but now you know sometimes i like to talk about you know some of the darker sides of it so i guess one of my questions is is what are some of the biz biggest difficulties you have when it comes to being an artist definitely you know a painter slash a rapper um i would say finding like-minded people um that's like on the same path that we're on and just have that go-getter mentality um, consistent mm. that's hard to find right yeah and then that explains why you came to Vegas because it made it a lot easier to find some consistent yeah. people definitely I understand that yeah what about you Tim um for us it's just letting people know that we do custom and other art because they think that because they see the celebrity art that's all we do but we mm -hmm. did a lot of custom art pieces for people right now that's yeah. in their walls so so it's just a misconception so people have they're like, why don't you do more cats? Or why don't you do? <laughs> always tell them we do everything plus that, you know? So just getting in tune with people, like I said, is like-minded, is able to spread the message that we're able to do all types of art. You know, we're open, very right. open. No, I love that. And is there like a, is there a certain message you guys have behind your art that you really just want to give out, like get out? Um, um, what would you say? Um, for the art, is just showing that anybody can pretty much do it, their own version, you know? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, any art is art in general, but most people try to limit it to, you have to go to school for it, you gotta go, you know, do mm -hmm. this and that, but really it's your, it's your idea of art. Right. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay, beautiful. Well, uh, before we get right to the audience, I just wanna tap on exactly what you said, just let everybody know you can do it, you know? So that's Definitely. exactly what we've been doing with the podcast you know we've been dropping an episode every monday for the last three years yeah. and it's like i'm showing people you can be consistent if you want to for sure. you know what i'm saying you it's possible make the time for it. you gotta make the time make the effort and do it mm -hmm. you know and a lot of people don't want to do that so i think that's beautiful but um go ahead mr tease what uh we got from the audience can't hear you brother can't hear you bro yes yep. sir It's kind of hard because we yeah we encompass so much um and it's always depending on the mood the day um for me i would let them go then i'll go next as far as what, <laughs> what do you focus on as far as um i love music but i appreciate the art too so it's kind of hard to pick just one because i go then, back and forth and one day i want to get into like filming and um definitely other things i want to kind of branch out to a lot of different stuff so mm -hmm. yeah
<laughs> oh, it depends on the uh, if I have that mojo. No, if I got that energy like Kobe, <laughs> yeah, I'll be done in like forty. We'll be done like forty-five minutes or so to an hour. Really? Or like sometimes. Well, sometimes we can do two and three hours. Depends on that. If we got yeah, that high mood. level. It depends on what's that, happening. Yeah, that time. energy will take the energy from what's happening, put it into the paintings. We'll be done. I would say two and three, four hours. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. And then to go off of that question, how much do you charge for a painting, a custom painting, and you know, a celebrity painter or something that's pre-painted? Um, we usually start off um, for eighteen by twenty-four is for fifty dollars, and then the bigger the painting, the more. So like for a thirty by thirty-two, it might be like a hundred dollars. Oh wow. Yep. So and you try to be reasonable. You and, and that's for custom. Um, custom included depends on the sizes. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty economic, honestly. Mm. So. Yeah, we try to make it reasonable for people. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, crazy. Do we have another twist question, Mr. T's? No, it's just me and my brother right now. Yeah, we're, you know, yeah. pretty much solo dolo or <laughs> us bringing our energies together, motivation together. We kind of motivate each other to keep going, but the uh, support is very... Uh, what would you say the word for that? Limited, I don't want to say the wrong uh, word. Small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not what we expected, but we're, we always push each other right. to continue to uh, grow in that area. Mm -hmm. Right. No, beautiful. And I always feel, you know, keep doing it and the support will come for sure. You know, Appreciate it. will come naturally. For no sure. Question. Um, <clears throat> so then, um, like you said, you guys do, are multiple type of artists, plus you guys, I'm sure, have other stuff to do in your life. So I'm just curious on... How do you find the time to always be creative? Or is it like, you know, I heard some people, you know, they sit out certain times to say from 12 to 1, this is when I'm going to paint. Um, other people is literally, if I'm walking down the street and the spark hits me, I'll pull out a pencil and start drawing right there. Like, how does it do for you? Just curious. Uh, for us, it's like whenever we're available for it. Mm. But we're very random with a lot of the art that we do. Yeah, mm -hmm. just kind of like on a whim. <clears throat> yep, yeah. it could be on a Sunday, it could be on a Wednesday night, you know. Mm. We're definitely unpredictable with art. So it's like you have to wait for the inspiration to hit you, and then once it hits, though, definitely. you're taking it and running with it. Yep. I was going to say, what happens when you guys get into, like, a like a creative rut, uh, like creator's block, essentially? Uh, that, have, that don't really happen too often. Really? No, yeah. I haven't witnessed it yet. So for us, it's finding time to figure out when we're going to do the art or the music. Mm. You know, so it's exciting knowing what we can create on both levels, you know. Mm. So it's like you have a whole bunch balled up all the exactly. time and you're just trying to find time to release it. Right. Mm. We'll just go, go, go. It could be either art or it could be us, you know, freestyling some stuff, getting some stuff ready for the music level. So mm -hmm. That's dope. I love it, man. I wish I was that creative all the time. I run so many slumps. I just, man, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. So, um... So then, how do you guys find time for your spiritual life as well? Like, do you guys have, like, some spiritual routines that you do? Meditating, yoga, I don't know. Audio books. Lift weights. Yeah, yeah, like, what do you do to grow yourself, though, personally? Um, I watch a lot of documentaries. I read books, um, a lot of audio books. Mm. For yeah. me, I just research spirituality in general, kind of figure out what I can take for someone else that actually helps me to develop a higher level of ascension. Mm. So it's pretty much being a uh, uh, researcher, pretty much. Right. Always researching, always exactly. growing your knowledge. Seeing what I resonate with. Right, much. exactly. And I like that right there. See what resonates with you. Mm -hmm. Like, it's good to re And I love that. I love that because it's like a lot of people won't research it because they think it won't resonate. But it's like, just test it out. Taste it. And if you right. don't like it, then throw it away. But right. if you do like it. Filter it, you know. Exactly, yeah. Take it and run with it. So then... Um, Besides spiritual, like, what about personal growth? Like, what do you do to uh, continue to grow yourself personally? Like, definitely in the artist realm. How do you guys always become better artists or better rappers or whatever it is you're doing? Um, I would say consistency. Mm. Just try yeah. to stay consistent. And just being grateful for the ability to be able to uh, communicate on the level that we do. Because a lot of people, which is okay to do what they do, but our area where we go in is more of the healing. You mm. know, so a lot of people... We don't see as many people that should be in that because it's kind of like the problem in the world. People are dealing with trauma, mm -hmm. so the music can definitely be a, a way of healing the, mm -hmm. the people. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that. I love that, and I feel like that with that Drainer song, like 
<laughs> when somebody starts trying to steal my energy, don't take my energy. Please right. take my energy. Cause like, yeah, I love it. Mm. All right, you guys got another question too. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, apologize. If I, I don't think people heard the first time. They should hear them now. Uh, there's a question though. Um, have you thought about putting your art on clothing? Yes, that's one of our goals. Yeah, we had little startups, but then of course we had those little pitfalls here and there. But definitely that's on the uh, agenda. Is it like a, a ETA, I guess, or possibly? <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, not not to put pressure like that, but you he know, wants, just, he wants just, like a coming in February or something. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, just just in case there was, you know, for fourth quarter or something. To, um, not, right now, we don't have any exact date. Yeah, yeah. Is unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. but definitely coming soon. Dope. Sounds good. Yeah, we just want to do it right. Right. Yeah. I feel that. Good quality, and we want people to be lined up. Mm -hmm. Let me get mine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then where, where can they go and get your art right now, actually, if they wanted to get it? Like, is there a website or anything they can go to? Um, right now, it's just social media. Um, you can go on our Instagram, at Hendrix Bros, um, Facebook. Okay. And they'll see us more art shows. We're definitely going to get back out there. Okay, okay gotcha. Okay, yep, so you already know your uh, your website and everything's going to be, in, not the website, the Instagram is going to be in the link of the bio for sure, the episode. So if you guys didn't hear it already, make sure you guys check out the link in the bio so you guys can check it later. So um, cool. So now let's try and get some fun now because I really want to know who you guys are. Nah. So uh, my first question is, is, are you guys flat earthers? <laughs> uh, for me, yes and no. <laughs> so I just take bits and pieces at make sense and then the mm -hmm. rest of it is almost I do more research to debunk other parts of it so I kind of get a little tangled up in what I think is what it is so it's pretty much me still researching but I, I believe that it's kind of two sides to it depends on the perception of the person mm -hmm. or how they're viewing it mm. okay I like that I like that that's really interesting could you elaborate a little bit more well, like, yeah, like for some people, going. they might be in the military, so they might have more facts. For the person that hasn't been in certain areas of the world, they'll still question. Mm. Some people know it, but they won't tell you everything because they're kind of like a cold where they can't say it. So it's just a lot of levels that some information is put out, but then some of it is, is uh, pretty much held back purposely. So you just got to kind of go down a rabbit hole, but don't go too far. <laughs> <laughs> or know where you're going. Know where you're going, you might go down a hole that will get you in trouble. Nah. So, <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. So then my second question would be is um, when the CERN machine turned on, I believe, in 2012, do you believe that the world actually ended? Or do um, you believe that? I think it was definitely a shift that happened because I could see the difference in our life after that time period. So mm. Yeah, I think everything became a little bit um, scattered as far as people doing things a little bit out of I don't know, just stuff even with animals. I don't know if you remember where the, all the animals are going in a little circle. Mm. Mm. The sheep. Like the frequency yeah, switched. The sheep. Mm. the sheep, yeah. The sheep, yeah. And uh, it just seems like the weather became a little bit more uh, intense. The ball time, yeah. Yeah, and then a lot of people, uh, as far as people, their behavior got a little bit more erratic, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So definitely they turned something up, but it didn't affect everybody, though. Right. And that's how I feel, too. I feel like a lot of people just they bounced off of them. They didn't really get too affected, for sure. Right. Why do you think that is? Uh, some people aren't grounded, like we said earlier. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's what I was about to some say. Some people are open to things they shouldn't be open to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the same thing. A lot of people don't have nothing to ground to, you know, whether it's a faith or, like you said, nature or just having a, some type of sense of purpose. Right. And then yeah. when they don't have that, they just get blown like a bag in the wind, you know. Whatever happens, happens. So, uh, cool. So then my another question for you is, do you guys believe in ghosts? And if so, have you experienced uh, anything supernatural? Uh, for me, I did when I was a young kid several times. Several I, times? Yeah, it was uh, shadow beings, but they were very, like, dwarf type. Mm. And they would show up, and uh, they would try to scare me as a kid. <laughs> wow. And no one believed me when I used to see them, so. Deep. And I knew they were definitely benevolent, but they were more on a, um, stuck in a dimension. Because mm -hmm. you can tell that they 
were only observing. But since I was very young, I was very uh, confused what I was seeing. So I would get terrified, but they were just observing me the whole time. Never got scratched or hurt or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was just, uh, in fact, I was just too open probably for the age that I was compared to most. Right. Do you think there's beings like on that type of plane of existence that can like directly affect you? Exactly. Like if you open yourself to that, if you're not mm -hmm. spiritually protected or grounded, they can definitely uh, trick you. What uh, what comes with like being spiritually protected and grounding in your case? Uh, knowing who you are, yeah. knowing that you're already protected, and just knowing that they can't affect you. Mm -hmm. They can taunt you and try to scare you, but they can't touch you once you have that connection from mm -hmm. the uh, the Creator. Right. Just like they they can open the door, but they can make you come open. They can tempt you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can that. tempt you to open the door, but as long as you know that. I have nothing to worry about. I got everything I need in this house. Right. Yeah, don't open that door. Because <laughs> they're just observing from another dimension, and they're trapped in that one dimension. They can't. But if they can get in you, it's mm -hmm. almost like a parasite getting into your body. Like, there's a lot of movies that's out like that, too. Like yeah. Fallen, one Denzel movie, where they touch the other person, mm. one from person to person. Mm. Right. And right. that's how they exist through through you, through the fear, technically. Right. That's deep. That's the I was thinking that parasite anime. Yeah, I was thinking that. that's I the think first thing so. I thought too. Yeah, <laughs> this world full of parasites on so many levels right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's crazy. I was gonna say, well, I mean, keeping it on that spiritual level, how would one find out that they're first infected by this parasite, and then how would they get rid of it? What's the good way is once you get your checkups from the doctor, you know that's not working. Mm -hmm. Therapist, it ain't working. Psychologist, it ain't working. Mm -hmm. Then it's definitely dumb. Spiritual, yep. yeah, and then how would they cleanse themselves? How would they? How should they go about it? Because they have they, to come to glimpse with the fact that it's what it is. Some people are going to be in denial, mm -hmm. think that it's food poisoning, or maybe it's them not being grounded. That's what I was about to say. I was going to say that, and that's why I was thinking too recently that a lot of stuff is just your chakras aren't aligned, right? And because you're not aligned in the way you're supposed to be aligned. You know, this elbow pain keeps coming back and the doctor's off balance. Off balance, mm -hmm. and it's like, why? But you're off balance. And that's Just think why. about it the cancer is the parasite. Mm -hmm. That's how deep mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. The cancer, the parasite that you, you ignored for so long, and it finally truly manifests and grew itself to your body. Once you thought it was really that. Yeah. Yeah. I've, um, so this one amazing book I read by Napoleon Hill, he talks about how, you know, a lot of the cancers, it starts off with indigestion. You know what I'm saying? If you're not eating right, but you're saying, no, I'm going to pop me a Tums. I'm going to take me some Pepto, not change up my diet. Treating it, not curing it. Treating it, it temporary not Temporary relief. Temporary mm -hmm. relief. And Bad that temporary relief is just going to, you know, I'm putting on this pain reliever, but that's not stopping the issue, though. It's nope. just stopping the pain. So mm -hmm. until I actually fix it, it's going to keep getting worse and worse. And then, you know, you wonder why your arm falls off. And it's like, well. It's been rotten for a long time, sir. Like, it's, been, it's been rotten, so you got to do something about it. Right. You got to do something. Um, okay, cool. So my next question for you guys. Money, power, respect. Which, if you had to choose one, which would it be and why? We can start with Melvin. Uh, just one? Yep, just choose one and why. Um, right now, I would say money. Because I feel like that's when I could really execute everything we're trying to accomplish. So. Mm. I like it. So not selfishly, but just more of I'm trying to get stuff done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me, it's respect because to me, that's one of my pet peeves when you can't get that, when you're giving it back already. Mm -hmm. Once I get that, I think everything else, I can come maneuver my way to I, the next level. I concur with that. I like that one. Mm -hmm. I, always, I always agree with respect, too. I always feel that um, with respect comes everything. Yeah. You know, the power is going to come and the money will come with the respect. You know, when they respect your craft, they're going to give you the money and then... The powers don't come along with that. I just will like again to note that Melvin, that was an interesting answer given that you said money, like yeah. your your explanation behind it. Because man, I, I, I mean, uh, how many times I've heard that question be asked, <laughs> and then somebody answers money, but then it's like for like a greedy type of reason, too. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that was that was refreshing. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes, no, that shows character right there. That shows great character. That, like I just want to get my projects off the ground, not oh. Oh, I want to bend. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So um, one of my last questions in this little, I like to call it a think tank. We haven't did a think tank in a while, so that's why I started running with it. 
So if you can go back to your, let's do, let's do two ages. Let's do your 10 year old self and your 18 year old self. What is one piece of advice you would give yourself? One at 10 and one at 18. 10 year old self. Um, I would just say, keep going to my 10 year old self. Mm. Um, 18 year old self, I would say, um, same thing. <laughs> I'm not sure. Keep going on. Keep going, bro. Um, just what you, whatever you're trying to do, like just keep. Don't stop. You know, mm. no matter what. Right. Do you feel like you stopped in the past, like at those ages, or is it just more um, of like an encouragement of what you were already doing? Yeah, I don't feel like I ever stopped. Yeah. I, I try to keep. I always had the mentality of I'm, I got to keep doing and keep going. So. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I like that one. I don't know what you. Uh, for me, at ten is just remembering that. This is just me at 10. I'm not going to stay there forever because at 10, I felt like I was, uh, you know, underappreciated being short. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> short? Having, have, well, you know, at 10, I wasn't, not like Shaq, but compared <laughs> to everybody else, it seemed like I was, everybody else was giants. <laughs> so I was a little bit shy, like you were saying, and didn't really know how to put that bass in my voice to get what I wanted. Mm -hmm. so let, let, you know, telling myself pretty, pretty much at 10 that this is temporary. Mm. that you will get to that next level, but it's got to be patient with yourself. Mm -hmm. And 18 is, I am the greatest. <laughs> I love so it. I started having that mentality of, I am better than I think I am. Mm -hmm. I just have to start believing it and using the action to manifest the idea that I had when I was younger. So, right. so it was really walking into that confidence at 18. Right. Mm -hmm. I like that one. I really do like that one. Appreciate it. What about you, Donovan? I'm curious. I was about to ask you the same thing. No, I'll ask you first. Oh, dang. Dang. All right. <laughs> um, 10? <sighs> Things will get better. Um, mm. like, like just so. like, I, I don't like know, that. just that, that period of my life with uh, just like the family dynamic and then even school. Um, I think that was like around middle school, but that's when all the black jokes started coming out, especially in like social media and stuff. Mm. And we were kind of, or at least my generation is kind of like that test dummy for Facebook and like yes. nearing the end of MySpace and stuff. But right. with all those memes coming out and then being in a magnet program where, uh, you know, I'm like one of a handful of black people. So it was just like a lot of targeting and it's just like everything going on, but things will get better. Things will be okay. And then 18, um, Patience. <clears throat> yeah, I felt like I rushed myself into college, like mm -hmm. especially when I didn't know what I want to do. Which now I I feel um, like I, I'm, I've chosen the right time to go back to school and mm -hmm. for a purpose. But back then it was just kind of like eh, I'm gonna just go and then just doing things haphazardly. Granted, I don't take back the exploration that I did, um, but I definitely could have taken my time on it. Right. Um, that could have like mitigated a lot of uh, a lot of pain, mm. self pain. But yeah. Other than that, that was that was what I, was what I would say. But what about you? I love it. I love it. Um, at ten, I'm really trying to think of ten. Like I was thinking that the whole time you was talking. I'm like I cannot think of nothing for ten years old. <laughs> uh, for ten years old, I would probably say, um, you know. Don't fit in, like like be unique, you know, enjoy your uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Cause I felt um, a lot of times I was, you know, I played a lot of sports, I did a lot of football, but then outside of like football, when we like got to the banquets together, it was like a lot of my teammates knew each other already. And then I was like, oh wow. So I gotta figure out how to fit into this group and understand what you guys are doing. And then, you know, that part made me do a lot of stupid stuff trying to be cool. Be accepted, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then at 18, I would say, um, I part of my, to tell myself, uh, don't rush, take your time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Cause you know, at 18, everybody has a thought at 18. At 18, I'm going to go to college, I'm gonna be done, I'm gonna be married by this age, have these many kids, by, and by 35, I'm, I'm a millionaire. Yeah. You know, and here I am at you know 33, and it's like, ooh, that plan went all the way down the trash, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, at 18, I would probably told myself like, Yo, relax and don't rush and 
and find that passion. You know, yeah. find that. Don't worry about the education. Education, good, yes, great job, but find the passion too in there. Yeah. You know, so that's got, what I would have done. You guys got another question from the audience? Yes, please. Then we'll go into our end game. Okay, cool. So um, this question says, um, have you created time goals like five years and ten years? Mm-hmm. Yeah, is there any like <clears throat> time timeline on uh, um, we, any particular project? Well, we want to, our main thing right now, we want to open up an art gallery. Definitely so that, that. That's like our main focus right mm-hmm. now. Where we sell our clothes and everything. Yep, like our gallery, we can just put all the entrepreneur ideas into one, you know, one building. One building. D, how do I get my paintings in your art gallery? Um, your I'm, paintings? Yeah. This just that, like let's a, say, oh, yeah, actually, yeah. an example. If I was painting, how how can I get my paintings into your art gallery? Um, that wouldn't be a problem because we we all about helping other artists. So very open to that. Yeah. So that that wouldn't be no problem. Love it. Just, just bring them. Show up and bring them home. Huh? Yep. All mm-hmm. about collaboration. Yep. I love it. So then, um, and then my, you know, going based off that question is, is what is the ultimate goal for the Hendrick Bros? Then, like, what is your, your top of the mountain? Um, I'll say to inspire other artists to have no limitations on art in itself of what they can do with it, and also to keep the legacy going for you know not only people we know but family, and and so on. Mm, I love it. Um, I have like one question before we head into our end game. Yes, sir. Um, kind of like I don't want to say it. Like uh, uh, this is like a personal part of like a personal project, I guess. Um, what, what would you say peace is to you guys? Mm. Peace. Yeah. Um, peace. I would peace. say just being a positive person, like just. Uh, just looking at the next person as your reflection, so put out the same energy, try to guide each other yeah. with integrity, mm-hmm. and help each other level up because everyone has their own weaknesses. Okay, so I mean, and this kind of, I kind of thought about that too based off of like other people's responses, and I would kind of equate that to like an external piece. Mm-hmm. It's like almost harmonious, I guess, with everybody around you. There you go. But what about that internal? Like, you know, for especially for what people are thinking about self love, like the topic of self love, right? Right. But having that internal peace that comes with it, how how would you what what is that internal peace for you without any external factors? And then how would you like how do you reach that in your terms? Uh, for me, is not having that judgment on myself or others. Mm not being too critical on myself and others mm-hmm. and just kind of stand in my own peace and being able to accept my flaws but not dwell on all the flaws. Just look at what's happening good in the present. Mm-hmm. And that, that to me, will bring you to that, you know, longevity of peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Anything to add to that, Melvin? Um. I would say you pretty much said it. Um, mm-hmm. Just try to stay grounded in peace and just, just stay positive. All yeah. right. And consistent. consistent. Yeah. Are you guys in peace right now? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, that's why I had to ask. I was like, this is, I can't pass this opportunity up right now. I have to <laughs> ask this right now. So yes. no, thank you for that. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Are you in peace right now? Oh. Uh, 80%. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Better nothing. Better yeah. nothing. <laughs> Could be zero. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. What about you? Who, me? Yeah. I'm always in peace. I am peace. Okay. I'm peace, love, and happiness. I like that. <laughs> yes. So, uh, we're going to go into our, our end game then. So, um, every guest that come on the show, we always like to ask a, a few ending questions before we wrap it up for the day. So, my first question is, is where are you guys still swimming to? when it comes to, let's do two parts actually. I wanna focus on the paintings first and then we can go to the music. So when it comes to the paintings, where are you guys still swimming to? And then when I say still swimming to, uh, we look at it as life is like a continuing journey no matter what, like I'm not done until I die. So you know, even though I make it to this one island, I still have another island I'm trying to get to. So it's like, what is the new island that you guys are trying to swim to when it comes to your music? Or I'm sorry, your art, sorry, your paintings. Right now. You want me to ask? Yeah. Uh, right now, I would say a team. Like, we needed a, a good, 
strong team of people that's like like minded. Um, mm. That's like our main focus right now, finding the right people. Okay. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, definitely put our energy only into that. And where it's not like a nine to five. Mm. Not like you're working, but you're doing something that you love. So mm. want to be able to, like you say, have that team and we can just branch off to to a point where it's like international, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody doing their own version of art and mm. what they already want to do with having the right uh, positive support around them. Mm. A solid team, pretty much. I like it. And then when it comes to the rapping portion of it, you know, the actual music version of it, uh, what is your, where are you still swimming to in that aspect? Um, well, we just plan to keep making music. Uh, we we want to work on our EP soon and um, another album next year. So just keep making albums and just keep collaborating with new people. Dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dope. Uh, what about you, Tim? What are you saying? Uh, pretty much close. Um, network a little bit more with different types of artists. Mm. Blend our styles. Kind of get similar messages out and just show that everyone has the message, but they have their own version of the message. Right. And then when people listen to the message, just look at it like that's his story. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it is from his experience. His so we like to be able to, you know, do music, but make sure the music is the reality of, you know, what people are dealing with and not something that's a little bit um, exaggerated. Because yeah. once it's too distorted, it will affect the youth in the wrong way. Mm. So we like to try to keep it positive where it connects with you know like minds right but at the same time authentic definitely i love it i love it and then um my last question i like to ask everybody is is there a quote you guys like to leave us with today um any of your favorite quotes that you just go through our life that you always use is there a quote you like to leave us with today Uh, i guess mine is very simple you probably have a better one than mine (laughs) um stay present Mm. Yes. Want to break um, that down? Sorry. Um, don't go too far in the past. Don't go too far in the future. Stay grounded and use the word gratitude. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're definitely looking at the smaller things rather than trying to go too far in what you don't got mm-hmm. or places where you can't get to. Don't strain your brain too hard to try to get there. Everything will be on perfect divine timing. Mm. I love it. Appreciate it. Yes. I don't know if I can think of any quotes right now. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, you're the master of those, though. <laughs> um, I mean, it ain't got to be, like, super deep. It could, it could be, be your own quote, too. It could be your own quote, too. Say, say, stay creative. Like, never stop being creative. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's one i actually been trying to practice recently, just be more creative, keep cooking, cleaning, whatever the case may be, use some creativity, you know. Mm-hmm. I tried some fried oysters the other day. Yeah. So, you stay creative. Oh, yeah, yeah, I fried did, them myself, bro. Did, how did it go? I mean, they turned out all right, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just the... I didn't get the right type of oyster, let's say that. I was looking for, like, the wine. You know the wine place? You got the big old oyster that big? That's mm-hmm. all I was thinking. You know, like, these little, little bitty... So uh-huh. I, like, put it into a patty, and, like, I opened it. I'm going to use it, and... Yeah, it was like a this little ghetto oyster cake, but... Yeah, yeah, I don't think it was good to eat too many of those. <laughs> hey, at least it was all right. Hey, at least I was creative. That's there what made I stayed creative. That was my thing. I, I got some trash and I became creative with it. So <laughs> I love it. So um, you guys have so many different type of projects. Is there any shout outs or anything that we all should be looking for for, you know, probably in the next few months that you guys want to shout out or announce? Um, a song EP coming out. Yeah, we plan to do an EP um, within the next two months. And then some uh, secret features. Mm. Oh. Mm. I don't want to give them out unless you. Yeah, we, yeah, just, we just dropped, dropped the one. whole album with 18 tracks, uh, Hendrix Bro 6, and that's on all platforms right now. Oh, number six. Yeah. So that means you got five more previously. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we started in uh, 2019, and we've been doing them ever since. Oh, nice. word. So one every year? Yeah, one every year. That's dope. That's really dope. So Apple Music, uh, Spotify? Every platform. Every yeah. platform. That's super dope. So <laughs> yeah, go catch up. I got to catch up myself now. I love it. Um, and then uh, art wise, any shows or anything coming up that you want to shout out? And you guys say you got about to get back into it. Any yeah. other shows you guys are gonna be at soon? Yeah, we plan to do first Friday and the first Friday of May. So. First Friday of May. Yeah, looking forward to that one. Yeah. Okay. First Friday in May, and then in the original art district, not on Fremont Street. 
Yeah, on Main and Charleston at the Arts Factory. Okay, just want to make sure we get that. Don't get that confused, people, because you say first Friday, then Fremont Street first. Yeah. So we were talking about real art. <laughs> <laughs> not liquor, not a shop mix. Right. Yes. Yo, it's interesting that you said that, too, because I just started reading this, like, philosophy book. And it's kind of like a short, like, like shortcuts to understanding, like, the general principles mm. of philosophy. And uh, they were talking about, like, aesthetics. And like, okay, what define what characteristics necessarily defines what art is? Mm-hmm. What is real art? And I feel like that's just too subjective to yeah. kind of even <laughs> like explain, you know, yeah, or to even like designate if this is art. Like, technically, this is a this is art. It can't like be. The, the design of it to hold the phone in itself. But then again, hey, it's just a contraption. It's not like a, what's the intent behind it? What was the intent behind the creation? Right. Which, just, uh, just some. I just have to say, like, it was an interesting thought. It's an interesting thought. Okay, so yeah. then, are we considering the girl that's walking around with her boobs out, but stars on her nipples? Is that art? Is that art? Who's to say? I mean, they charge for pictures, so it's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> so it's the artist that the eyes of the beholder. Yeah, the artist in the eyes of the beholder. Beholder, I love it. And then I think that the one thought I had yesterday too, because I was reading this at the car wash, and I was like, well. You know who 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 who's anybody to place value on another person's like project, right? And you can't invalidate that, right? Mm. So why invalidate yourself since you're a creation of God, which is a whole beautiful art piece, like the creation of the world in general, mm-hmm. is just a whole big piece of art, right? I would say to always just try to find the beauty in it, yeah. instead of trying to like discount it, yeah. definitely. You know? And then also, like, find those who find the beauty in it, you yeah. know, because I always think about that story, you know, real quick. Um, the story of the kid, you know, dad's dying. He gives him a watch. He takes the watch to the pawn shop. They say 50 bucks. He takes the watch to the uh, jewelry store. They say 200 bucks. He takes the watch to the antique guy. He says a million dollars. He sees the value. He sees yeah. the value because he knows this is a true whoop de whoop de whoop watch, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, see the value. And they'll pay top dollar for that value, no question. That. But, um. Yeah, so appreciate you guys, Hendrick Bros, Melvin, Tim. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Anytime. Uh, We appreciate all the knowledge you guys shared. Uh, I learned something about you guys. I hope somebody else out there listening learned something about you guys as well. And um, if anything, we're probably going to bring you guys back on so we can have a conversation on what is art. Yeah. I think that would be a long topic right there. Looking forward to it. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Thank you guys so much for the time. We appreciate you guys. Please make sure you guys go check out Hendrick Bros. One through six and be prepared for the EP dropping very soon. Um, And also check them out at the first Friday in May. So, you guys get you paintings and possibly get you a custom one. Uh, I know Tease Mac had a few of them and I always loved them. I was like, how do I give me one? So, yeah, once the cameras get off, I'm going to sign up so I can give you one myself. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yes, with all that being said, I hope you guys had a wonderful day, a marvelous afternoon, a splendid evening, and remember to just, just keep, keep swimming. swimming. You want to shout out Just Keep Swimming one time for you? Uh, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just there keep you swimming, you guys. And as we leave it now, we're going to have that uh, amazing drainage song playing in the background for y'all so y'all can check it out. Drainage.
be good without the fake and hate at a point in life where I don't need your discouragement. Some people just don't want to see what you have to offer. They'll never see what you could seem to give. Thank you for being the one I could trust and talk. I don't have, you think, I, you think I'm a worry about 